If there is a sexy part of Cinema 4D, it has to be the Cinema 4D dynamics. Harnessing dynamics with the MoGraph effectors is a great way to bring your concepts to life and to let Cinema 4D do a lot of the heavy lifting. I created a logo reveal for a company called Cornerstone Paving and we were able to utilize these MoGraph effectors with the dynamics to create some really fun, engaging pieces and we were able to do it really quickly. So I'm gonna break down a couple of these shots from the logo reveal to give you a basic understanding of some of these tools. So let's take a look and then jump straight in. Let's do it! <laughs> Now that we've seen what we're going to create, let's um let's jump in, start having a bit of a play. All right, first up, we're gonna let's start, let's set up our scene a bit. So let's do that by grabbing ourselves a rectangle, and this is gonna this is gonna form the shape of our backdrop. Let's pull it up a bit so our baseline's on the zero point, and let's let's add a bit of rounding to our corners and just increase the radius here. All right, I think we're gonna need this a bit bigger, so let's just go a thousand, a thousand, and let's pull this back up so we're on that zero point. Let's increase the radius a bit more. This is gonna form a beautiful backdrop for us. So with my rectangle selected, I'll hit C to make it editable. And I'm just gonna untick close spline and you can see that this now, and you can see this now gives us a gap in our spline. Let's rotate it around and let's grab our rectangle selection tool and we'll just remove these few points that we don't need anymore. I'm just gonna pull this one up a little bit and this is gonna be our background. Pull this one along just to give us a bit more ground here. And this is looking nice, this is a nice start for us. So to build the backdrop, we're gonna use a sweep nerb. So let's drop that rectangle we've created into a sweep nerb, and we're gonna grab ourselves another rectangle. If we drop that into this hierarchy, it now sweeps that rectangle along our original one. So let's just lower our width here and give us a bit more height. And there we go, we've got ourselves quite a nice looking backdrop. So the next thing we need to create is our mock-up logo that we'll use as an example. So let's grab ourselves a cube. Let's, uh, let's give our Z depth just a little bit, make that a little bit lower. That's looking nice, that's a good start for us. So let's duplicate our sphere, pull it over a bit, and now this time on our X, I'm gonna make this 40 as well. There we go. There we go, that's a nice little star for us. Let's just turn our backdrop off so we can see what we're dealing with here. Duplicate those spheres again, and then this time, with them both selected, let's change their Y height to 40, pull it down, and there we go. We've got ourselves a little start here. And now this is gonna be our logo that we'll use to play around with some dynamics and dive into the MoGraph effectors. Now let's select all our cubes that we've got here. And we're just gonna give them a little bit of a fillet surface, just so we've got some nice rounding on the edges there. And beautiful, this is a good start. So to be able to apply effectors to these cubes, the first thing we need to do, we're gonna to need to put them into a fracture object, and this is gonna allow us to apply effectors to them. I just grouped them in a null there, just to zero out their position, drop them into the fracture, and now let's pull this up a bit off the ground. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is now make these dynamic. So we go tags, simulation tags, and we'll apply a rigid body to our fracture object. Toggle over to the collision tab, and we need to select all on our individual elements, and this will allow it to be applied to all our cubes within our fracture object. Now you can see if I hit play, these just fall. So let's give some dynamics to our backdrop as well, so they have something to land on. Doing the same here, going tags, simulation tags, but this time we're gonna give it a collider body tag. 
And the only thing we need to change here is just the shape. Let's change it to a static mesh just so it recognizes its geometry. Now I hit play again and you can see they fall, bounce around and that's perfect. This is a great start. It's exactly where we need to be. The reason I love using dynamics and effectors is we can get some seemingly complex animations very easily. So to set this up, let's go on to our rigid body tag that we've applied to our fracture object. And we're just gonna give it some values here to follow its position and follow its rotation. And you can see now when I hit play, they stay in the air. This is a great start for us. So now we've got ourselves to this point, it's time to start having a bit of a play with the MoGraph effectors. So let's look at a bit of a breakdown of the initial render to see which part we're gonna create here first. Now this is the one we're gonna attack first, what I call the pulse grow. You can see our pieces start organically growing, but bouncing off each other, not intersecting, and we get some nice animation. So let's see how that comes together. So let's go MoGraph, Effectors, and for this technique, we're gonna use the shader. You can see at the moment, with the shader effector, it's just affecting the scale. And you can see when I hit play, everything grows up, and they all push each other apart. They find their position. And that's quite nice, but what we can do is we've got this, we've got this strength parameter here. And you see when I pull it up, they gradually grow. So we're just gonna keyframe this. We're gonna make it zero on frame zero. And let's come forward and we'll make it 100%. And you see now when I hit play, they just grow up and organically bounce off each other. This is a great start, but what we really wanna get is that pulsating. So to do that, let's go over to our shader tab here and we'll just give it a noise. Let's increase our global scale a bit. And all we need to do, we're gonna leave the rest default, but we're just gonna give ourselves one in the animation speed. And you can see that now we've got this organic growing. We've got this, we've got this nice animation really easily. The other thing here that we're not gonna need right now is it's dipping into shades of gray. And that's because our shader effector can also affect color of our actual object. But we can turn that off by coming over to the parameter tab, coming down to color mode and just switching that off for now. Now we can still come in here and edit this. So let's give, let's try this. Maybe it scales up by one. And you can see here, we've got some nice growth now. This is looking pretty cool. Let's give ourselves a few more frames just so we can see a bit more of the animation. And we can also come in and change the noise and get a completely different animation. And I think that's pretty cool and really easily to manage. Now another thing, at the moment we're, we're, we're uniforming our scale, but we can actually manually feed figures into the X, Y, and Z. So perhaps it's scaled by one on X and Y, but let's increase our Z depth just so it really, really comes towards the camera. Let's drop, let's drop a camera in here so we can come back to our spot. And maybe our shader is affecting it too much here. Maybe a scale of three will look nice. Yeah, see this is looking quite nice. This is looking good. And you can see they're just pulsating there, constantly changing in scale, but still not intersecting. They're bouncing off each other. And we're achieving that by the dynamics tab, wanting to follow its position and recognizing that the other shapes around it are also dynamic. And I think that's great. Now that we've knocked that one over, let's have a look at how we created this little intro sequence here where all the pieces come flying in, bouncing off each other. We can achieve this in a couple of different ways. The first way I'm gonna show you how we can do this is by using the push apart. Now I think this is only available in R18, but it's a really cool effector and I'll show you what it does. Now straight away you can see if I increase our radius and strength, it just pushes it apart away from its original position. Let's turn our backdrop off here because that's gonna get in our way a bit. Let's take our strength back down to 100 and you can see I can just increase this radius until our shapes are out of view. So about 600, it looks like that's gonna be nice. We can do the opposite here. Keyframe at 100 on frame zero. Let's come over 20 frames, take this down to zero and you can see now they're flying in. Now I think our backdrop here is uh, causing us some issues. So let's just toggle that off. And you can see now these pieces are flying in, bouncing off each other, and that's looking really nice. Another way to create something similar, but also quite unique as well, is to use the random effector for this. And you can see this is automatically applied to the position. And if I modify these parameters, 
you can see it's randomly positioning our shapes in space. And I can do the same thing here. Keyframe it at 100, pull it down to zero. And now let's have a look at this. They come flying in from random directions and we get some really unique animation there. And it's so easy to come in here and modify these positions and get a completely different look every time. So maybe minus 3000 on X. It's looking pretty good where we've got it on Y. So we'll go about 5000 there just to get some nice round numbers. And on Z, we'll make that 2000. Now I'm just going to pause this, go to frame zero and make sure that none of our shapes are in view. And we can still see the R a bit. So I'm just going to push this along on, so I'm just going to push this along on X, about minus 5000. It's going to have that out of view. Now let's hit play again. And look at that, that's quite nice. We've got these things bouncing off each other before finally resting in their original positions. Let's have a look at the reference, what we're going to create on this one. You can see we've got our shapes spinning around, but you can see they're all scaled at different sizes initially before resting into their final position. So let's see how that one comes together. Now, when I was first trialing this one, I came out of my fracture object and I thought, okay, I just need you to spin around 360 degrees. But by just keyframing that rotation parameter, what I found is that it would only affect, it would only affect the local position of the cube and it wouldn't rotate as if they were all one shape, which is what I wanted to do. Just in case you guys were having the same issue, I thought I would touch on that and just show you how we can overcome it. So let's grab back, so let's jump back into our fracture object. Let's delete those keyframes that we set on its rotation. And instead of what we're gonna do with it selected, we're just gonna add a keyframe, not on any individual parameter, but just a keyframe. Let's come forward a few frames and in our viewport, let's rotate this 360 degrees. And you can see it's affecting some parameters in our size. And this is what's gonna enable it to rotate as one object. <clears throat> let's just slide that final keyframe over a bit just to slow this down, just so you can see what's happening. We've got these shapes all spinning around as one, but still not intersecting and we're getting some nice bounce off each other. You can see these are all rotating around as one shape, bouncing off each other before getting to their final position. Now the way I went around making these larger at the start is I wanted them all to be unique and not scaling up uniformly. So to do that, I used the step effector. Now I'll show you what the step effector would do in just a sec and let's just add some keyframes and get this set up. We'll keyframe it at 100, slide along and keyframe it at zero again. And you see now when I hit play, they scale down. So let me show you what this is doing. If I just toggle our scale here, you can see these are all individually getting scaled up at different rates. You can see we can also jump into our step effector and start messing around with its rotation at the start here before it comes to its final resting point, which is what we're after. Now let's have a look at the final piece we're gonna look at here. This was the crazy paving effect where it all starts generating to these fragments before blowing out and finally resting with all its new pieces. So let's have a crack at making that. Now we need to set this up a little bit differently. So let's pull our connect out of our fracture and instead this time we're gonna use a fracture of Vernoy. Let's add a rigid body to our new fracture here. And you can see that just falls down in the clump. And you can see we haven't quite set this up right, so let's jump in here and make sure this is applied to all our individual elements is selected to all. And now when I hit play, these fall crumble down into a mess, and this is a great start. This fractal object will generate, will generate colors per each fragment, and we don't need that, so let's just turn that off. Let's turn that off and get our clay model back. 
I'm just going to hit NB to reveal our polygons, just so we can see where our fractures are. Come over to our fracture Vernoy and jump over to the source, and you can see this is where it generates our points. So I'm just going to start increasing our point amount here, and you can see it starts adding more fractures to our object. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over to zero. First of all, I'm just going to make sure that we've We've set this up completely right. Let's jump back into our dynamics body on our new fracture Vernoy, and let's just give it some parameters to make sure it's following its rotation and position. And you see now, now when I hit play, these don't fall and we've got this set up right. So let's come over to frame zero, keyframe it at the 20 points we've got, Let's come, let's come forward to frame 60 and we'll just increase our point amount to about 30. And you can see now when I hit play, these start bouncing around, creating that crazy paving effect. I'm just gonna give ourselves a few more frames here to look at. Hit play again and see how this is looking. Nice, so we've got all these new fractures, so what we need to do now is have a look at how we can blow these out before finally resting into their final position again. And to do that, we're gonna use the push apart effector. You can see when I increase the radius, they start pushing out for us. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring our strength down to zero and keyframe it at about 90. I want, this to, I want these to push apart around the time that our fracture stops generating more points. Come forward 20 frames, keyframe its strength to 100. You can see these now all go flying. Go forward about 10 frames and I'll bring this back down to zero and that should send them back to their initial point. So let's have a look, let's see, see what we've got here. We start getting these new fractures, they push apart and come flying back. Perhaps this was a bit too quick of a comeback because we're, we're not quite getting our final look there. So now we're just gonna tweak our keyframes and have another look. Our shape's still not quite coming together how we'd like. So let's just tweak these keyframes again and we'll hit play and see how that looks. And I think I've seen what's, what's causing us the issue here. I think because we've still got our backdrop toggled on, we've got a few pieces intersecting with the floor there. And I think that's causing us issues. So let's just turn that backdrop off and have another look. They start fracturing, pull back together, and look at that. They finally rest into that final position with all those new points, and that's looking great. All right, this was a bit of fun, guys. I hope you can take something away with it. We've dived in, had a look at some basics of the dynamics, playing around with affecting these objects using the MoGraph effectors, housing them in a fracture object. I think it's a lot of fun and a great way to get some seemingly complex animations. All right, thanks, guys. I hope you can take something away from it, and I'll see you next time. All right, cheers.